So in 2020, expanded use of mail-in ballots across the country because of the pandemic created what was known as the Red Mirage Effect, where Trump was initially leading in some states when the votes started to get counted. But then later on, as mail-in ballots started to come in and got counted, Biden all of a sudden was leading. Now, Trump used that as a pretense to claim that the election was rigged, never mind the fact that he discouraged his own supporters from voting by mail, so he should have expected most mail-in ballots to be from Biden supporters. But nonetheless, that lie right there caused irreparable harm, obviously. Millions of Americans till this day believe that the last election was stolen. And sadly, some of those people who believe that lie and still believe that lie are now in positions of power in key swing states. And even if Kamala wins in, say, Georgia, Trump cronies want to deny her those 16 electoral votes by indefinitely delaying the certification of the election results. But it'd be a mistake to think that Trump's cronies only want to be reactive because they're also being proactive and they're trying to prevent her from winning in the first place so they don't have to steal it. But if push comes to shove, that's what they're willing to do. So in this video, we're going to talk about the ways that Trump's minions are undermining our democracy. First, let's talk about Texas. Every election, there's talk of Texas going blue, and this year obviously is no different. But here's what the GOP in Texas is doing to stop that. As The Hill explains, they straight up purged 1 million voter registration since 2021. Now, voter purges aren't uncommon. All states do this. They remove registrations of voters who move out of the state or who become ineligible for some reason or die. But that's not what this is here. Nearly half of those purged are from a so-called suspense list, which means Means that they were registered to vote, but they haven't voted or the state thinks that they moved or they haven't responded to a miscellaneous certification form by the state. And because of that, they were placed on a suspense list. And about 2.2 million of Texas's 18.3 million voters have been put on this list. And once you're on this list, you have to jump through additional hoops to vote and you risk being purged altogether. Now, anecdotally, some people made it on the list when they shouldn't have been on the list. Maybe it was accidental. Maybe it was nefarious. But say, for example, that there's one county that has a large number of black or Latino voters that tend to lean Democrat. Well, if the state wants to stop them from voting, all they have to do is send out a bunch of certification forms and hope that they don't respond. And if they don't respond, well, they then get placed on a suspense list and then they're given extra hoops to jump through if they do want to vote. Now, if I was registered to vote, I would assume that everything is copacetic. Uh, in my state of Oregon, you know, you don't really have to do anything. You register automatically when you turn 18. But in a state like this, you know, you'd be mistaken to think that you're registered and then that's it. You get to vote because there are other things that you have to consider. If you don't respond to one of these certification forms, you could be screwed. Now, this would obviously affect poor and working class people who don't have permanent addresses more than wealthy, more affluent voters who do have permanent addresses that tend to vote Republican, by the way. Now, you might say that that's overly cynical, but you have to understand that Texas Republicans have made it abundantly clear that they do not want minority communities to vote. They imposed voter restrictions, banning drive-in voting and uh, limiting voting hours. They uh, have strict ID laws that disproportionately impact communities of color. They don't want minority communities to vote. Now, in response to voter suppression tactics, Democrats in blue counties in Texas, they've had to double down on voter outreach efforts, which is what they should be doing. But guess how Republicans in the state have responded to that? by trying to stop them from doing voter outreach. As the Texas Tribune reports, Republicans are trying to stop Harris County's voter outreach effort where they send voter registration forms to eligible voters. Now, there's nothing illegal about this, but it was inexplicably removed from the agenda by county commissioners after Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick and a GOP state senator from Harris County called it an attempt to bypass their newly passed voter suppression law and claimed without evidence, mind you, that the county would register undocumented documented immigrants. So that's why they couldn't do it. So, I mean, they're tacitly admitting that they just don't want people to vote. They're trying to stop a voter outreach effort. 
they know that when more people vote, Republicans lose. And they're not going to let the state turn blue that easy. But if you thought that that was bad, we're barely scratching the surface. Because last month, as MSNBC reports, on Wednesday, Paxton's office announced that it had carried out an undisclosed number of search warrants in several counties, including one that houses San Antonio. The League of United Latin American Citizens, LULAC, one of America's oldest Latino civil rights groups, says the raids targeted several of its members. In doing so, Paxton has tipped his hand about his determination to undercut voting rights this fall and potentially made an enemy of the very people the GOP needs to win. Now, as a result of this, LULAC is calling for a federal investigation into these raids, rightfully so, because even though Ken Paxton's justification is that these folks are responsible for election fraud and vote harvesting, he has no evidence to support that claim. And this is literally just voter intimidation. And it goes to show you how brazen Texas Republicans are. And one of the LULAC members that they targeted was an 87-year-old woman. And they confiscated her laptop and her phone, and she was traumatized. What were you wearing? My nightgown. And I had all these policemen around me. It was embarrassing, humiliating. I was so angry. It was horrible. Yes, because I'm sure that that 87-year-old woman is part of some grand conspiracy to steal the election away from Republicans. It's just absurd. But they didn't just make her wait outside for hours. They rampaged through her home and listened to what else they stole from her. We also learned that part of what was confiscated during the raid last week was Lydia's voter certificate, voter registration certificate. This is a license that officially allows her to help out other people to register to vote here in the state of Texas. Now, this is part of Lydia's profession. This is what she dedicates her free time to, to helping out senior citizens and veterans in the state of Texas. But she says that she doesn't necessarily have a date as to when she will be getting her things back, including her license, her phone, her computer, everything that was confiscated. And so this officially limits her ability to continue to work in the state of Texas. And she says this, above all, is also one of the major disappointments. She doesn't necessarily know if she's going to be able to do this before Election Day in 2024. Well, that's convenient for Republicans, isn't it? Now, by the time they clear this obviously innocent woman of any wrongdoing, it'll be after she's able to help members of her community vote. So make no mistake about it, all of these efforts are intended to stop Democrats from taking control in Texas. We call this authoritarianism, my friends. And if you live in that state, I'm going to link you to the Texas Secretary of State website where you can confirm your voter registration and make sure that you're not placed on one of these lists. But as authoritarian as all of this is, these types of voter suppression tactics aren't new for Republicans. But what is new is the bullshit that we're seeing in Georgia, where three Republicans could plausibly steal the election away from Kamala Harris, even if she wins. And Democrats are suing to stop them from doing that, as explained in this MSNBC clip. This is a potential recipe for chaos because Georgia has 159 counties. And the lawsuit is about, as you noted, two different rules passed by the Georgia State Election Board that impact how county election boards conduct their own processes prior to certifying election results. Not only would it allow individual county boards to conduct reasonable inquiries prior to certifying their results, but it also would empower local board members, in, again, in each county, to demand any and all election-related documentation prior to certification. And that bumps right up against a provision of Georgia statutory law that says counties must certify their election results by a time and date certain. So through this lawsuit, the Democratic National Committee, the Democratic Party of Georgia, a variety of county level election board members, even voters and two Georgia State House candidates are asking for a declaration that to the extent that these rules are inconsistent with that certification mandate, that they be enjoined so that the election can go forward without any uncertainty about when these county level results must be certified. OK, Vaughn, just to complicate this even further, it's not just Democrats who are filing this lawsuit. You have people like Lucy McBath, she's a member of Congress, obviously, who are calling for some Republicans to be taken off these boards. They say they're anything but looking for a free and fair election. They think there have been actually ethical violations. Even the Republican governor, Brian Kemp, 
is looking into this situation. So lots of moving parts. It's Republican Brian Kemp who may be the one standing in the way yet again here for these MAGA Republican election board members. You are looking at Governor Kemp, who at the urging of Democratic lawmakers and Brad Raffensperger has also pushed back against the Secretary actions of these Republican board members. Governor Brian Kemp in the last 24 hours uh, asking his attorney general whether he, under Georgia state law, is constitutionally obligated and has the ability to seek the removal of these board members. And if the AG comes back to him and says that the state law does do that, at that point in time, Governor Kemp could then go and hold a hearing through an administrative judge to have both sides hear their arguments on this and potentially remove those Republican board members. So thankfully, Democrats and Georgia's Republican governor, to his credit, are being proactive and they're trying to stop just a couple of Republican tyrants from disenfranchising the entire state of Georgia should Kamala Harris win. But if Trump wins Georgia, of course, this won't be a problem because, you know, it's not about fraud. It's about the outcome of the election. And if it's an outcome that they don't like, they'll cry fraud. If it's an outcome they do like, they'll say there wasn't fraud. Now, by the time a lot of you see this video, things could change. But if it doesn't and if those election deniers refuse to certify the election and they refuse to do so all the way up until January 6th of 2025, then what happens? Well, the state of Georgia can't finalize its overall election results because every county has to certify the results in order for the state to proceed and submit their final tally of the results, which means that Georgia's 16 electoral votes plausibly won't be counted when Congress certifies the election results on January 6th. And if the race comes down to Georgia, those three election deniers could literally disenfranchise everyone in the country. It would be the end of American democracy as we know it, where a president successfully assumes power after losing an election. It's why Michael Fanon called it the ultimate and perhaps final test of America's democracy, because that day will determine whether or not our country even remains nominally democratic. But it'd be a mistake to think that that kind of rat fuckery is only coming out of Georgia, because as Rolling Stone reports, in the swing states of Arizona, Georgia, Michigan, Nevada, North Carolina, and Pennsylvania, Rolling Stone and American Doom identified nearly 70 pro-Trump election conspiracists currently working as county election officials who have questioned the validity of elections or delayed or refused to certify results. At least 20 of these county election officials have refused or delayed certification in recent years. So these fuckers are present in all of the swing states. And Democratic attorney Mark Elias says that he expects mass refusals to certify the election results. And the article goes on to explain that election deniers at the local level in Georgia and Arizona are trying to make certification discretionary. So that way they can just choose to not certify in the event the election doesn't go their way. They are brazenly authoritarian. But Certification isn't supposed to be a political act. The article explains how it's simply a ministerial task, right? In the same way that it was symbolic for Mike Pence to certify the election results. It's not supposed to be a political thing. You just do it when the election is over. That's the way it's always worked. So the fact that local election officials are trying to do this is a massive scandal. But I'm not telling you all of this to fear monger and catastrophize. I'm telling you all of this so that way you're prepared. Confirm that you are registered to vote ahead of the election. Get familiar with the local officials that are responsible for certifying the election results in your precinct. And also, most importantly, organize. Be prepared to show up and protest the election officials who might try to take your vote away. Meet up with other like-minded small-D Democrats ahead of the election to make sure that you're all ready to take to the streets and protest if they try to attempt this bullshit. Because... As theoretically as easy as it sounds for these election deniers to just straight up kill our democracy without our consent, they can only do that if we let them do it. And if we make it clear ahead of time that we won't let them just steal democracy away from us, then they won't be able to do it. We have power in numbers. So remember that and tell everyone that you know, because win or lose, Trump and his cronies are planning to unleash hell across this country. And the difference between 2016 and 2020 is that this time, we're gonna be prepared. Mike is a total shit lip. Once he started shilling for the DNC, I stopped watching. <laughs>
so I definitely won't be hitting the subscribe button or turning on notifications by clicking the bell. No way. It's very sad, I know.